Good morning everyone! Welcome to Renz Garcel Channel. Isang mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat at mabuhay po tayo. Alam po ba natin bilang mga Pilipino, kadalasan sinasambit natin ang salitang mabuhay. Alam po ba natin kung saan nang galing ito? Ang ibig po sabihin ng mabuhay, minsan nakatranslate natin sa English as long live. Pero actually, ang totoong pinanggalingan nito ay ang salitang vivacious sa English. Ang ibig sabihin, full of life. It can be traced in a Latin word which means vivere, meaning to live. The word was created around 17th century using the Latin adjective vivax, meaning long live, vigorous, high-spirited, o sa Tagalog, sinasabi nating mabuhay. Bakit po sinasabi po sa inyo ang salitang mabuhay? Dahil ito ay nagbibigay ng mahalagang meaning sa ating buhay. Ibig sabihin nito, we need to live life to the fullest. At yan po ang pagtuunan pansin natin sa araw po na ito na sana lahat tayo we live our life to the fullest. Kaya sana po ay tapusin natin hanggang dulo ang video po na ito para natin maintindihan kung anong ibig sabihin ng live life to the fullest. At sana po ay patuloy po nating subaybayan ang channel na ito. Kaya pakinggan po natin ang ating mga kapanalig na magbibigay sa atin ng kanilang life experience here. as if it's your last. Life is beautiful. It's something that we hear so often and think that we understand completely. However, it's something that we ignore when we are too busy. It's something that we forget in times of desperation. It's something that we waste when we are too proud and especially when we lose someone we love. Our grief makes us want to take our own life or maybe waste our life. But, as what one dying character said to the other, you must live on. You'll cry sometimes, but you have to smile a lot and be strong, because that's how you honor the love you were given. According to Lao Tzu, life and death are one thread, the same viewed from different sides. Life is a magical adventure filled with exciting new stages, unexpected twists, and visions. A wonderful story that you never want to finish and you never want to see how it will end. But even if we enjoy our journey, death is still there because it's a natural event that is inevitable. We should gradually accept that the absolute truth about life and death is that we are not in control of both of them. We have no control of where you are born and your life is dependent on it. When we reach the age of adulthood, our parents make the life decisions that shape our future. Even death is beyond our grasp. We may go to the doctor or the hospital, but none as 100% sure would be able to save us from death. Anything that exists is temporary, meaning that everything that has existence, living or non-living, indeed has death. If one wants to understand death, one must first understand life. Just like what Martin Heidegger said, if I take death into my life, acknowledge it and face it squarely. I will free myself from the anxiety of death and the pettiness of life. And only then will I be free to become myself. Yes, we all don't want to die, but we should accept the fact that death is our last destination that we all share. In connection to that, God's plan for our salvation is evident in the Bible, which is to trust in Him. Positive thoughts and good deeds will never be enough to make up for our sins. 
whether we are Christians, religious, or attending Mass every day, God will not admit us to heaven right after we die because we must first have faith in Him. Now that we've already introduced life and death, let's proceed to judgment. We cannot deny that most of the Catholics believe in personal and last judgment because we were reminded by God that we must be judged by all of the actions we do here on earth. That's why our choices and deeds always count. The first thing we encounter is our particular judgment. It occurs immediately after death, where the soul, now removed from the body, stands before God to testify for our good deeds and sins perpetrated. In this judgment, we are either sent to heaven, taken to purgatory for further purification, or sent to hell if we want to be removed from God. After that is the last judgment, which refers to the end of time at Christ's second coming, where it will be unveiled, but we never foresee when it might happen, so we must all be prepared. In addition, we state that death is unavoidable. When we consider punishment as both true and inevitable, we gain a deeper understanding of sin and its internal ramifications. Some have an image of God as the big, mean judge with a gable that wants to pick apart everything we have done through our life, show us all our faults, and send us off to eternal damnation. Our faith teaches us that when we stand before God and our life is revealed to us, that is when we will know where we are going because of our choices in life. In a sense, it is not God who sends us to hell. We chose hell by our personal decisions. He simply tells us the facts. Some people continue to accept that there is hell, but Jesus mentions it often in the Bible. Hell is an eternal state of punishment that consists solely of being deprived of the pleasure and sight of God face to face. Those that visit hell are executed for the rest of their lives. We were made to spend life with God, while hell is an eternity without God. That's why he warns us that we will end up there if we don't apologize and learn from our mistakes. Some of you might be wondering, what about purgatory? Isn't it true that we only have two options before we die? It's either heaven or hell. However, we must be first innocent in order to reach heaven. The truth is that most people who die are probably absolutely sinless and free of all temporal punishment associated with guilt. In purgatory, our soul suffers for a while and it's being cleansed. That's why we should not be afraid because our souls will go to heaven eventually. To conclude what we have said, God is aware of all we do, both good and evil, and we must account for it all. He is fully aware of our obstacles and life decisions. The truth in our personal and final decisions shouldn't make us fearful of anything we do. Remember, God is not only divine, but also merciful, and He always sees our efforts and doesn't leave us behind. There are times where I often think about life, its mysteriousness, its unpredictability, its beauty. I wake up in the morning wondering how other people were able to live their life to the fullest after losing someone they love. I remember seeing how devastated they were, how close to being broken they were once, but now it seems as if everything had changed, and I know exactly why. We often view that as a foe because of its permanent ending of one's life, the fear, the suffering, and the pain, a torment by pain and sorrow that sometimes leads us to our breaking point. We see it sometimes as a plague to avoid, a scenario to run away from in hopes to set them astray, but death is inevitable. Earth was never our home. It is only a temporary shelter that can let us live our life experiencing materialistic things with over-the-top ambitions. This is the place where we can experience all sorts of things, and that includes pain, the sorrow, and the sufferings. Death is a part of our lives. Death gives life meaning, because life wouldn't be important if there is no end. 
when we talk about that, there would always be a judgment. A judgment of what we've done here on earth. A judgment of our actions that only the Father above could see. Particular judgment occurs at once that right away, while general judgment happens at the end of the world. Heaven is our home, and that is the place where we all are going to. Because there, there would be no more suffering, no pain, and no more tears to shed. Hell is where you could continue to feel pain in every ounce of your body as if you're being called by death once more. Purgatory is where you could still suffer after death has claimed you, but ultimately your loved ones could still pray for your repentance so that one can move to heaven. Because in heaven, God will be there by your side. Because in heaven, there would be nothing but happiness and fulfillment that you would be able to feel. In God's grace, He does not take lives for no reason. In each and everything that is happening around us, there is a reason. Sometimes it is needed in order to open our eyes, to wake up to reality, and to move to do something. It serves as a sign, a way to tell us that in life we wouldn't be able to attain everything we want. But it shows that God has a perfect plan for each and every one of us. Life doesn't end here on earth. Life starts here and it will still continue in heaven where we will be able to finally reunite with Him. So wake up and live life to the fullest. Thank you so much for a beautiful reflection and sharing about living life to the fullest. We have to remember that these are just testimonies in life situations, but I think you have also your own different life experiences, how you live your life to the fullest. We have to remember that when you dedicate yourself to living life to the fullest, you feel like you can overcome anything. Living life to the fullest means you are in tune with yourself. This allows you to make conscious decisions that directly affect you. Remember, you yourself is the one deciding for your life. That's it. That is why this allows you to make conscious decisions that directly affect you. When you're just going through your emotions, Oftentimes, you are not always doing what is best for you. While you might feel it's important to live life to the fullest, achieving this goal looks like different for everyone. You have different life experiences with mine. That is why we have to work hard for what you want because it won't come to you without a fight. You have to be strong and you have to be courageous in, in facing this life and know that you can do anything if you put your mind into it. If somebody puts you down or criticizes you, just keep on believing in yourself and turn it into something positive or a challenge in your life. That is why you need to focus on yourself and you have to look at the positive side of your life so we have to live life to the fullest thank you so much for watching at sana po patuloy niyong subaybayan ang ating channel po na ito dahil palagi po tayong magbibigay ng positive vibes at mga positive reflections and inspirations to all of you para patuloy po nating enjoy lang ang buhay po natin dito sa mundong ito. Kaya sana po ay magiging positive ang pananaw po natin sa buhay palagi. Maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng ating mga subscribers at ating mga silent viewers. Sana po ay mabuhay tayo at isabuhay natin ang mga turo sa atin ng ating pananampalataya at patuloy tayong mananalig sa Diyos. Mabuhay tayong lahat mga kapanalig.